This is my first video, and we're going to go into the Mark Dice video he has on the Super Bowl from 2014 with the uh, halftime show with Bruno Mars and the Red Hot Chili Peppers. You know, a lot of people throw a lot of hate towards him. You know, people don't, they don't see this imagery and they don't really make a big deal out of it. It's just uh, become very uh, normal for them. It's quite worrisome to see negative attacks and insults thrown at Mark Dice for his work. These types of individuals like to call us that are awake to the larger reality mental or crazy. In reality, it's the other way around. I've coined the term non-awareness disorder. I mean, why not? They're always adding new disorders to the DSM directory throughout the years. So let's add another one. The condition which one has no or little grasp on the larger reality which they live in. This may be the true reason why over 50% of the population this year will suffer from a mental illness, all according to the DSM-5, the Psychiatric Bible. The truth is we are under a dark system of control. The natural world is a beautiful and amazing place. However, there is a darkness which resides in every one of us which is spoke of by famous psychologist Carl Jung in great detail, as well as many other leading psychologists. This darkness is in control of many aspects of our lives, thus the manifestation of a broken system, a satanic dark system. Even though some of us may not be able to fully comprehend it like Mark Dice does, they do see it and feel it in some regard. Perpetual wars, corruption of government, the corruption of the banking economic system, just to name a few. I believe every human in the system recognizes these negative issues that, af that affect all of our lives on a daily basis, at least I hope. Although many don't want to really address those blatantly obvious issues and are much more content consuming bread and circus entertainment from their cable feeds, also known as programming, as the peasants of ancient Rome did in their time. Sigmund Freud's nephew, Edward Bernays, aka the father of marketing, who was taught about in marketing class at just about any school, quoted this. We are governed, our minds are molded, our tastes formed, our ideas suggested, largely by men we have never heard of. This is a logical result of the way in which our democratic society is organized. Vast numbers of human beings must cooperate in this manner if they are to live, live together as a smoothly functioning society. In almost every act of our daily lives, whether in the sphere of politics or business, in our social conduct or our ethical thinking, we are dominated by the relatively small number of persons who understand the mental processes and the social patterns of the masses. It is they who pull the wires which control the public mind. His book, Propaganda, from 1928. Often, when these issues we generally all agree on are addressed in conversation, it can create an awkward moment, an elephant in the room type scenario for humans suffering from this non-awareness disorder. This also occurs in times one may share original thoughts or ideas. These disengaged people have a herd mentality. They want to feel like they're part of a group, also known as a hive mind. This is due to their own personal insecurities and darkness they live with, which a lot of those personal issues are from living under this ever increasingly dark system their entire lives. Eleanor Roosevelt famously quoted this, Great minds discuss ideas, average minds discuss events, small minds discuss people. Any ideas or thoughts that threaten this type of human's worldview are vehemently opposed due to their loss of security or togetherness. They are slaves within their own mind. The Matrix is a system, Neo. That system is our enemy. But when you're inside, you look around, what do you see? Businessmen, teachers, lawyers, carpenters, the very minds of the people we are trying to save. But until we do, these people are still a part of that system, and that makes them our enemy. You have to understand, 
most of these people are not ready to be unplugged. And many of them are so inert, so hopelessly dependent on the system, that they will fight to protect it. Were you listening to me, Neo? Or were you looking at the woman in the red dress? This dependency is all that these people have ever known. This has caused an ever-increasingly rate of domestication of our world of humans. Some are completely unself-sustainable of life's basic necessities. We depend on others to provide these services at our convenience through consumption. But what would you do if they were suddenly weren't available to you? These people who stay in this form of mental enslavement generally talk about the weather, insignificant events that transpire in their lives, work, consuming products, money, or gossip. It's pretty uncommon for them to have original thoughts, feelings, and ideas, or at least have the courage to bring them up with others, which results into self-editing their own feelings and thoughts. This repression of true self, which many do every day, will lead us to temporary escapes of our reality, which many can have adverse effects on us, like drugs, food, alcohol, sex, work, consuming, entertainment, etc. This brings me to Mark Dice's breakdown of today's modern age pop stars, growing trend of satanic mass public performances, as of late being the Super Bowl with Bruno Mars and the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Mark Dice broke down the symbolism and the message of that performance perfectly. However, many of us can't see his perspective on this because of the social engineering we have endured. I was one of the people trying to escape. I'm a recovering sex addict. I was chained down for years with this vice. For them to have had these sexually charged songs being performed for thousands of children is incredibly disturbing. I was one of them. I was the first generation of children to grow up with internet access. At the click of a mouse, children can be exposed to explicit damaging images on a massive scale that previous generations were never exposed to. I bought into the sexual propaganda and lived by the world's most famous Satan worshiper, Aleister Crowley's famous quote, Do what thou wilt. Many of today's celebrities idolize this Satan worshiper, including Jay-Z. This, however, was not a conscious effort. I never heard of this guy until recently. This was from years of social engineering from the occult and a coping mechanism to deal with my own personal issues and voids by escaping reality through sex. The world's wickedest man, also known as the Beast, Crowley, was an advocate of sex magic, which was a practice that would transcend human consciousness. I experienced this in some extent firsthand. He openly accepted and embraced multiple addictions and performed depraved sex acts as rituals. He was a high-level member in secret societies and the occult dating back to the 1900s. He predicted this perversion of sex would become mainstream in the future generations to come. Look around, it has happened and it's getting worse. He and other occult members used the triangle pyramid shape in their worship of Satan. Crowley would perform black magic in pyramids in Egypt during this time. Sex should be had with someone you truly love to have that special bonding connection with. This is something I previously never grasped. If you think that this year's past Super Bowl performance was not a big deal, it's just music, it's not. It's there to shape your mind through hidden messages without you even really knowing it. The truth is, sex is there to share with the person that you love, the person that you want to have that creative force, that special connection and bond. Anything outside of this is sin. Persistent sin will lead to destruction in every single occurrence. Acting out in sin may seem fun, but it's just a temporary fix on unresolved issues in your life. It never is going to provide a long-term stability of happiness, joy, or peace. It will only bring you negative feelings and baggage. This creates a world of bondage, and the sin becomes a cycle to deal with these negative feelings and emotions, coincidentally. 
But people plugged into this system still, the ones just going along with it, the ones suffering from this non-awareness disorder, tend to idolize athletes and pop stars, reality TV show performers, actors and actresses. I could possibly see idolizing people in our world who have actually made a significant difference to humanity, such as like a Tesla, an Einstein, Galileo, Magellan, you know, these type of influential people. At the end of the day, you need a role model, though. It's kind of in our nature, I believe, in our design, I suppose. And the greatest role model you could possibly have, without a question, is Jesus Christ. Now, I know many people out there under this satanic programming cringe when they hear his name, but he is a historical figure. He existed and performed great miracles. He lived an impeccable lifestyle, and that is the only way to truly be fulfilled in life. His teachings in the Bible are deeply profound, even today. They cannot be overlooked as being meaningless. Break away from the herd and find your true light. Read the Bible. I know it's not popular due to the programming and the social engineering we are under, but it's truly amazing when you have a breakthrough. Every day is a battle with darkness within yourself, and it takes a spiritual willpower over mind and body to truly be impeccable. But this is something that we should strive for every day. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll have some more videos to come shortly. God bless.